Yesterday, I spent my entire day assembling this cement mixer with some breaks, mainly to cool down from being frustrated. Um, so this is a central machinery, one and a quarter cubic foot cement mixer from Harbor Freight. I found three different videos on YouTube that um, where people assembled them step by step and showed basically how to do it. Um, with some assumptions that the person watching knew a little more maybe than I knew about um, mainly which hardware to use for which thing. Because in this manual, there are very few pictures um, that are helpful. You know, there are a couple of, a couple of pictures... They do not, like, they'll say the this bolt goes here, 35, but, and then you can go to a chart. Here's a picture, kind of, of the whole thing you can refer to, but, um, so then there's this chart. So you go to 35, and it says this bolt, and the how many of them there are, and then you have this diagram, which, if you look really, really closely, um, you'll find 35, and can kind of then look at like, well, try to guess what size that is. But the actual bolts are not marked with any kind of corresponding marking that they have marks on them, but they do not match up to this chart. So you have to guess what goes where. And by the end of it, I have this whole bag of extra bolts that don't fit, that don't have nuts to match them. Uh, the washers that don't fit in the right spots and I ended up finishing out like finding my own bolts to put this last part together. So that's um, something that if somebody else out there is about to assemble one of these, I would highly recommend, especially if you know anything about, how, um, you know, the right way to use these nuts and bolts, film that and put it on YouTube for the next person or people who are trying to figure this out. So the main thing is I got it all assembled. It's done. And um, then I go to plug it in and, um, how does it work? Um, nothing. So I ended up waking up in the middle of the night, um, going back through some videos, finding some troubleshooting videos. And I think that the problem is going to be in here that um, the belt is either too tight or pressed up against something. There's, there's a a thing that can be adjusted here um, and I don't even know somebody else showed how they attach this and it was different from mine but they also had some equipment that I didn't have like, that came in the box that did not come in my box so it might be that this is um, it was a, a much older video so maybe it has changed but this is the main thing that I think I'm gonna mess with today uh, I'll try raising tightening tightening and um, and then underneath here there are some bolts that um, where the motor is attached, and I'm going to shift that around a little bit, and I'm going to see if that works, and I'll let you know. Just to catch you up, I have pulled this cover off. It's attached by wires, so I've got it propped on something. And then these under here, I don't even remember how I got them on there, but um, it's really hard to get them off because I can't get any tools into this space to hold and pull. So I've just been struggling with that for a little while. I can see that this belt is not moving. So that's something I overlooked when I was putting it together last night. It was sort of the last step and uh, I didn't think to check to see if this actually budges at all. I also noticed that my handle, everybody else in their videos was able to move this. Mine doesn't move. So there's something going on there too that's too tight or done wrong. So. Um, I'll keep working on it. Well, I got the handle loosened up and now it turns the drum like it's supposed to. <clears throat> but I cannot get this wheel to turn. I can't, when the motor comes on, it just won't turn the belt. So I, I have it plugged in now with the housing off. And um, so when I turn it on, it makes a sound. I've tried sort of adjusting the position out in and it's not I I feel like the it's just not turning on one end so I am now reaching out to people who are more mechanical than I am I'm 
I'm going to see if I can get some help. All right, I figured something out because I pulled this whole thing off and what you can't see once it's attached is how close these bolts are to hitting this. And you can see it's right up against it. So my next step is to figure out how to make it so that these aren't pressed up against each other. But I, um, I feel more positive, more optimistic. Okay, I now have a working cement mixer and it's all thanks to a neighbor who I texted to see if, um, if they could come help me and they have some mechanical experience. So um, um, the culprit, the main culprit was this part. So if you have one of these and, and um, this is not going to be obvious at all, the schematic uh, shows it, but it's, it's so hard to see in, on that document. I had this panel slid back here and I had shorter screws through holding that together. Um, I also had the motor slid too far forward so it was bumping against this on the inside but the longer screws um, tie straight into this um, like the nuts are actually welded on inside so I had it I had a whole different configuration um, and this I'm trying to remember exactly why it makes a difference, but it it helps um, make it so that the belt can freely spin right inside of here. And then I we also had to keep adjusting things, um, you know, so we had to keep this front cover off while we uh, tried the motor a few times to make sure that we got it so that the belt tension was correct inside. And um, now that all this is back on, I. I I wish I would have shown you while it was happening, but I also didn't want to put my friends on camera, um, you know, without their permission. So under here, these bolts um, can, they can loosen up and then the, the whole motor casing can slide back and forth. So you can adjust it right there. So uh, with a little help from very nice neighbors, we've got it running. Um, so it turns and, you know, it's not the best cement mixer by far and, it, and it's going to work for my needs. I'm, I didn't actually get it for cement mixing. So now that I've addressed that part of things, if you follow me and my work, now I'm going to talk about why I got the cement mixer, which is not for cement mixing. I got it because I'm um, working on this big community mural and I'm going to be doing this giant event um, on July 1st and 2nd at the Olympia Armory where I'm going to be bringing in uh, people as a, on a drop-in basis to come in and make butterflies for the Metamorphosis Community Mosaic Mural. So what I've been doing is chopping up glass in addition to having over here my piles, my disorganized piles, there are more on the shelves over there of the little pre-cut tiles that I'll have available. I'm also going to have all this chopped up scrap glass, but I'm going to tumble it in the cement mixer. And this is a new thing to me too. I've heard tell that this is something that works. Hopefully um, my experiment will work out and I'll have some glass that where the sharp edges have been removed and that's very much in part for the, 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 the fact that this is a basically a city event and there's some liability involved. So I, I want to make it so that people don't have to cut any pieces. They don't have to nip. They can make their butterflies really fast and they'll be able to sort through and pick out the pieces and make them fit without having to cut themselves. And the, so that anybody at any level, at any age can do it. Now, I've always done these in the past without tumbling the glass because, I mean, you can, you can touch this glass without cutting yourself and I've never ever had an issue. So the cement mixer is just one more layer of protection for people. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I will, um, I'll follow up later and let you know how that went because hopefully that'll work out. Um, if not, I'll just use the cement mixer as a cement mixer because I do mix cement. So, ah, so a successful conclusion.